Episode 195 of Futures Radio Show, sponsored by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world effectively manage risk. For access to free educational tools and resources for the active individual trader, please visit activetrader.cmegroup.com. Every day, traders and investors dive in to tackle the ever-changing markets to find opportunity. Futures Radio Show is your number one source for answers to the questions that all market participants want to ask. Veteran futures trader Anthony Crudelli sits down with the most influential leaders and top traders in the industry. Now, here's your host, Anthony Crudelli. Hey everyone, before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsors, CME Group, Trading Technologies, RJO Futures, and Top Step Trader. Now today I spoke with prop trader Fabrizio Giorio Fili. Fabrizio is a prop trader in Italy, so I began today's chat by asking him how he got his start in the financial industry. We discussed his method for trading price action and Fabrizio shares with us the technical tools he uses to day trade futures. Finally, I've always struggled trading stocks because I grew up a futures trader. So I asked Fabrizio how he handles trading both futures and stocks. As usual, thank you all for listening, and please enjoy this episode. Fabrizio, welcome to the show. Hello, Anthony. How are you today? Good morning, and... Uh... Uh, good afternoon, actually, to everybody and to all the uh, all the listeners. It's yeah, a pleasure it's, to be here. Also. It's great to speak with you today. I found you on Twitter, as it seems how I find most of my guests. You mentioned me in your daily Warburg a few times, so I went and checked it out, and I really enjoyed it. And when I started reading more about you, I know that you live in Italy. You're a prop trader, so I was very interested to hear more about you and your trading. So it's great to have you on Futures Radio Show today. So let's start off with your backstory. How did you get your start in the industry? Uh, very simply, to make a long story very short, because it spans for uh, some decades, uh, I always been in uh, very much interest in uh, in on in the markets, and mainly because of, I was uh, as a as a manager as an executive in large corporation, I was involved in that. And most large part of my friends, they were working in New York, and not only in New York, but in um, always in Italy. They were uh, investment bankers. So uh, I studied as a fundamentalist, and always very much interested in that. Uh, back in the 1980, uh, as a matter of fact, my first trade was in uh, 1980 by telephone uh, on equity, uh, April 1980, and uh, and then I I moved on in 19, 1997. I started with the first online platform uh, here in this country, in Italy. Uh, well, I lived in the US for a long time, by the way. In the first online platform in this, in this country, and from there on, I, I moved ahead. And, but I wasn't completely uh, at full time, uh, uh, in, uh, wasn't uh, completely set up. I had, I had my corporation and um, and then I moved on until 2002, when I reached the peak of my uh, managerial and executive career as a CEO. And then I decided that I had enough money to do exactly, uh, I was, yeah, I was 40, 43, 44, to decide to do exactly 100% to devote the last part of my life to doing exactly what I like to do, which is actually trading and managing assets. And now you say it's your passion, and you were born in Italy, so I'm wondering, how did you get interested in financial markets, specifically derivatives? Uh, again, very simply, because uh, everything comes from the... Uh, uh, from, I, I, I'm graduated in, um, in economics uh, in, uh, in Italy, then I, I upgraded uh, my education uh, in U.S. and uh, in, uh, in Italy through Bocconi and et cetera, et cetera. But the, the, main, the, the, the trigger are my friends. All my friends were working in uh, investment banking, and in the beginning of the 80s, uh, call it, talking about uh, uh, callers uh, or swap or whatever uh, was a kind of exotic. And, and the uh, contingency with them, 
made myself uh, and the, the ability to be with them in the in, in their floor. I'm mean, talking about some brothers, talking about uh, uh, City uh, Goldman. Uh, all my friends were there. Um, get me ex excited on that. And as I said, uh, much more excited on uh, on the derivatives because on derivatives you can find things that are uh, implied and that you do not see, you do not have in uh, in equity. You talk about how you have a simple way that you look at price action across the different asset classes. And you told me in a different conversation that you don't forecast, you trade what you see. And I love that because I actually wrote a post on this a while back called Trade What You See, Not What You Think. So can you please tell us how you look at price action and then execute what you see? Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Anthony. It's, it's, I appreciate that. Uh, very simple. Um, I guess that everyone uh, passed through uh, a moment in which is, um, it tries to divine the future uh, in some way. Uh, I started as, as a fundamentalist, so 100% in fundamentals. And I always actually lost money in that way uh, during, uh, during the 80s and the part of the 90s. Then I met, and I must say that, uh, uh, two persons that I that I, I, I care a lot of them, uh, Larry, Larry Pizzavento, uh, and Bryce Gilmore. And with Larry and Bryce, which uh, I, I work since now it's almost 20 years that we know one each other and we work uh, side by side, Le Bryce not, isn't, isn't active anymore. Um, I learned uh, that uh, you have to see, you have to trade exactly what uh, what you what you see, not what do you what, not what you imagine. So one step after the other, one trade after the other, and and this is it. Uh, the way that I see, if I'm too long, stop me, uh, because you know I'm Italian, so I'm a little bit uh, talky. <laughs> uh, the way that I see, uh, the, the the way that I that I uh, apprise the market is through swings and through a certain number of patterns. We, I'm talking about derivatives in this moment, but it can be applied even to, to equities. And it, it's, it's, it's not complicated. It's absolutely very simple. I use, uh, I stick with a small number of tools, which is um, my uh, Fibonacci, uh, my extensions, uh, my corrections, and through that, uh, I very simply define a certain number of levels and uh, I follow the price action. Price action doesn't lie. And step by step, uh, step by step, I, I reach uh, certain levels. I define certain levels uh, always in, in a certain way, of course, that, that certain way is based on, uh, on, uh, on benchmark correction or benchmark extensions. Um, try to, to imagine that I started as, as uh, a Tom DeMarc with Tom DeMarc, uh, um, following Tom DeMarc structure, and uh, Tom, uh, Tom Joseph. Uh, so I was a kind of, in, in, in technical analysis, I was a kind of a, a mix, a mixing Tom DeMarc and Tom Joseph with, uh, with Tom DeMarc. Can you share with us a trade example in the ES that you've recently executed, telling us what technical uh, analysis tools you were using, tell us how you determined to stop and the targets. Uh, in this case, very simply on uh, on yes, I use uh, a FIB extension and a Fibonacci retracement. The pivot comes in uh, in play very often, so I calculated the pivot by myself, and the pivot are are even calculated by the uh, by the machine. I take in consideration the low of yesterday at uh, twenty six ninety eight, and I draw a FIB extension up to the first interesting correction that I, uh, relative uh, high, that I can, uh, I was able to, to see uh, by, by that the, the, the moment, which was a 27.28. So FIB extension, correction down to, uh, to the low of uh, uh, 10 o'clock CET, which was um, about uh, uh, 2716, and then I have a projection 121, one, and the projection 121 one bring me up to 274750. I entered, uh, that was the large 
the large scenario. Once the market opened today, I opened at the trade at the very, at the one, two, three, right at the open. And then I've been waiting for, waiting for to, to rise. It went up until the pivot, which is another level, another tool that I use definitely. I calculated the pivot, the different level, level pivot, even by myself through the Excel. And it wasn't able to overcome 27, 24. So my first, uh, my first longer uh, objective of 27, 48, 40, 48, 27, 47, 50 uh, was not. Uh, was not there. So at that moment, I understood that probably the market was not directed to the to the top. And uh, but I actually could get my 3.5 uh, points. That was good enough. Period. Market reversed, went down. I shorted at at the 27.14, I guess, if I can see my blotter properly my property and uh, um, but it didn't come out it didn't take it out was a fake out it didn't take it out properly uh was 27 14 and something and made 47 and 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 picos and then back up so i was let's say stopped uh as very small loss which is one of my point cut the losses immediately okay so you used some fib tools and when you're going in to get into the position how much are you willing to risk are you risking one to one so if you're risking three and a half points to make three and a half points is that how you determine your stop my target is always from 3.5 points to five points maximum and my entry is very aggressive as so, as, as soon as i see at uh, the moment uh, in which I, I see that the bar, which is on the support, or, or I can see a number of contracts moving inside, I can see the a flow of, of money getting into, I enter. But generally speaking, this is much more, um, much more subjective uh, than. I follow the, uh, the, the movement, I load up, fairly good on this. Uh, let's say I load up from non, not less than five contracts, five to, to 20 contracts, uh, it depends. And once I get my 3.5 points, I'm out. If the market corrects and the bias is always up and I can assess that it's up, I re-enter and I follow the, always with, this, with the rule of 3.5, five, five, five points, um, achieve. My ratio is always one to one. So my stop is equal to my, my reward. Gotcha. So what happens is you determine your entries by using your fibs or anything else that you're using uh, to determine entries. And then when the market gets to that area, you watch how it reacts and then you enter, you know, you're risking three and a half to make three and a half. And then you just go about uh, entering with your experience, like we talked about at the beginning, how potentially ag aggressive you may be or less aggressive, depending on the day and the scenario. Absolutely, yes. I'm generally, I'm always aggressive. Uh, and this, <laughs> I'm always aggressive. So whenever I, 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 I spot it, I'm in. Even by market, generally speaking, market. Uh, on ES, uh, on another, other, uh, in, this, is, this is my style. Uh, which is a which evolved during the, the years uh, very much aggressive i get what i get if the market gets if i'm uh, not say convinced uh if i know that we are in, in a certain position I, I i probably and it comes against me uh, always within uh let's say uh three points which is generally speaking the the correction that they make uh, if I'm within the three points, I load up something a uh, little bit, and then I expect to to reach again my 3.5, or if I'm if I if I have the chance, even get grab the five points. Uh, 
when I reach when reach in normal volatility, normal volatility, if their volatility is much higher, like uh, like one month ago in uh, in February, of course I don't go for the 3.5. I, I I go for much more. Much more. Uh, I go for the five to the ten, uh, and because it's, the direction is there. So you trade both derivatives and stocks. I'm wondering, how is that lifestyle for you? Because for me personally, I've been a futures trader my entire career. When I try to go and trade stocks, I have not been nearly as successful. I've always just accepted this is who I am. I trade futures. That's where I've made my money. Uh, I just feel more comfortable there. I always found it was difficult to be able to, you know, shift from trading futures to stocks because my futures instincts would just take over and it would actually hurt me in trading stocks. How does that work for you? Same to you. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I'm telling you lovely. As a matter of fact, uh, I trade 70 percent uh, derivatives, and uh, uh, the rest is uh, the rest is equity and fixed income. When I lose money on uh, on equity is because I'm I'm too much a derivative trader, and, and that's the reason why again I said I I try to to curb my activity uh, at no more than twenty percent on the, on uh, on uh, on equities. We, we come from a from a school or a certain school, and uh, it's difficult after years to to change it. Great stuff today, Fabricio, but we're not done yet. I have some rapid-fire questions if you're ready for those. Sure. All right, everyone. Our rapid-fire segment is sponsored by Trading Technologies. Access the global markets from virtually anywhere with TT. They are the world's fastest commercially available futures trading platform. And now you can trade cryptocurrency spot and derivative markets side-by-side -side for the first time. For more information, visit tradingtechnologies.com. What trader has influenced your life the most and why? Uh, Bryce Gilmore and uh, Larry Pesavento. Bryce uh, wasn't the most incredible trader, but was the uh, most aggressive, uh, very aggressive, uh, but was the best combination between an aggressive trader and an, a phenomenal, a phenomenal uh, trader analyst. Uh, in the world and Larry because it's Larry president and I learned a lot from him from him what was one of the hardest things that you've had to overcome in trading not to be stubborn you fall in love with a, an idea and that idea uh, it's it's a bias uh, it's a bias that, that stay inside your mind you you become stubborn and uh, at the first moment in which I realized that I trade what I see and I trade what I not what I imagine, I'm not sovereign at all. I'm a believer, but until a certain point. And the other part gets back to the what I said before. I learned not to look for long movement in uh, derivatives, for short movement, loading up. Period. How has your trading evolved over the years? Okay, I. My experience uh, swung as a pendulum. I was, uh, one time I was 100% fundamentalist, and then I was 100% uh, technical analysis. I evolved during the years uh, trying to find a, a, an acceptable and balanced mix among, among the two, uh, which is, of course, uh, this is a job in which you never stop studying, neither learning. And of course, it has to be improved again after 20 years, but uh, this is it. I'm evolving this way. What's the number one resource you spend your time on? Price action and my model and my, my little tools, my very simple little tools that I use. What's your favorite book about trading or the markets? Pitbull by Marty Schwartz. What's your favorite movie or TV show about trading or the markets? Uh, lately, The Big Short, long time ago in the 80s, was Wall Street. What's the best piece of advice that you've received about trading or the markets? Trade what you see, do not forecast, and be prepared. 
If you can give a piece of advice to the new people interested in getting involved in trading, what would it be? Analysis, analysis, analysis. Get your homework. Uh, trade what you see, not what you imagine. Never forecast too much. Never forecast too much. And uh, one day, one trade after the other, one day after the other, and cut your losses immediately. Last question for today. If you weren't involved with the markets, you'd be doing what? Okay, as you know, I, had, uh, I have two lives, uh, so I already given enough on the, the other lives. Uh, but as I was, when I was young, I was a pro racer in motorcycle. And uh, so my dream was to for six uh, Grand Prix uh, in, in track. And my dream, of course, in, when I was 18 to 20 years, 20, 24 years was to all was to be, became a, a to win a world championship or to be a, a pro uh, to, to do that as a career. That was the other life that I I did only for a small part, and a dream that never that never will never will never fade. Fabrizio, where can people find you on Twitter and give us a website to check out? Well, um, Warburg Hundred on Twitter. Uh, I have no website. Fabrizio, thank you so much for coming on Futures Radio Show today. Thank you to you. It's been an honor and a real pleasure to be hosted by you, uh, Anthony. Thank you very much and my great compliments for your, for your mission, for your, for your broadcasting. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you have any questions or comments for myself or my guests, please visit futuresradioshow.com and sign up to be a premium member for free. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes.